Here's a quick tour of the CAS terminal. Let's start with the back. On the back here, I have this perforated 3D printed back panel instead of the optional copper back panel. The copper back panel helps a little with cooling and lets you overclock the CPU a little bit more, but this works perfectly well for um, a little more portability. The perforated back makes the unit a little bit lighter. It also helps us see through this. So under here, you can see the Banana Pi M20 under there with the custom copper heat sink sitting on top. Over here on the left-hand side is the Amp Ripper 3000. This is the power management board. And that connects over here on the right-hand side to the battery. This is a 330 uh, or 3300 milliamp hour LiPo battery. To power it, or to charge it, you can see here, this is the power port. And there's a net dot cable in there. This is net dot gen 10. This lets me just quickly pop on a charging cable. You can see now it's charging. There's the charging light and I can pop it off. We'll go back to the front. So here's the front of the unit. This is the WaveShare 7.9 screen on here and the CAS keyboard. This is 3D printed. Uh, it's a sanded and finished 3D print. And this is 3D printed inlay with a copper filament there. Okay, so I'm running Debian on here with the Spectre WM window manager. Let's open up uh, my favorite text editor, LightXL. Right now I have con this connected to a uh, Bluetooth mouse, but also I can switch into mouse mode on the keyboard if I don't have my Bluetooth, ma Bluetooth mouse connected. Okay, so here's LightXL, and let's start a new document, and I'll show you a little bit about the how the CAS keyboard works. So let's zoom in a bit here, get a bigger text, and that should work. Okay, so the CAS keyboard uh, looks like it's missing some keys. So notice normally there would be a Q here, an A here, and a Z here. Now those are actually what those keys do if you tap them, and the P is over here where you would expect it. But if you hold down those keys, they do something different. So for instance, when I hold down the Z, I get a shift. We can type hello world in all caps. There's no arrow keys on here, no dedicated arrows. So instead, I use the A key to move into a navigation layer. So if I type hello world, now if I want to delete that, I can hold down my navigation layer, hold down shift, and I'll move to the left. This will move, this is the home key. So I, J, K, L become my arrows. U is home, O is end. And then I also have page up and page down here. So I can quickly delete things. Let's just see that again. Hello world. If I want to delete that, very quick. A few other things this are missing, um, you know, some numbers for instance. So to get to the number layer, and there's also some symbols on this layer, I hold down my right thumb and I can type numbers and also some symbols that aren't on the main layer. And also have a lot of combinations on here to do special things like type special mathematics commands, which you'll see in another video, um, and do things like backspace. So there's no dedicated backspace. To do backspace, I hit O and P at the same time. That'll do backspace. For enter, I hit L and the quote key at the same time. And for tab, I hit A and S at the same time. So there's a lot of combinations of keys that do special things as well. As I mentioned, this is running Debian uh, with Spectre WM, so it's powerful enough to do a lot of text editing, some light programming. Uh, we can also open up Chromium. Chromium will take a few seconds to open up here. You can do some uh, web browsing on it. There it is. Effectively, anything you can do on a Linux computer, you can do on your CAS term. Thanks for watching.